testing for here, we're going to do two different tests because so far we've talked about two main reasons why we get neurological sensations coming down the arm. The primary is going to be the first type of thoracic outlet syndrome, which we call anterior scalene syndrome. Basically, the scalenes are tight, compressing that brachial plexus. That's, of course, in the neck. The other type of neurological impingement we discussed is a nerve root compression. That's from a herniated disc. So we need to be able to test both of these and differentiate them. Now, when it comes to neurological testing, the rule is you always test proximal to distal. So you would start with the neck, and then you would do the anterior scalene, and then you'd gradually move down the upper extremity. Now, if somebody has numbness and tingling in their hands, that leaves you with somewhere between 9 and 12 tests, depending on how you choose to do them. So, does that mean every single time you have to do all 12 tests? Well, theoretically, yeah, but realistically, no. Your inquiry is going to give you a much stronger indication as to what you're actually looking for for tests. All right. So we're going to start with how to test for a compression within nerve roots. Now, this is called the Sperling test. When it comes to the Sperling test, my rule of thumb is if you think you need to do the Sperling test, refer out. Because the, the Sperling test means that there's a herniated disc. Treating a herniated disc is outside of your scope of practice, and ultimately, if they don't know and you suspect it, they're going to need imaging anyways. So it's probably best to know this, but also recognize that if you believe you need to do it, you'll probably want to refer them on anyways, okay? So what I'll actually get you to do is for this test, I need you sitting a little bit lower, so I'll get you to sit right there for me. Now, when we do special tests, we actually want to always be able to look at their expression and their face. But this test requires us to stand behind for proper body mechanics, so it's incredibly important that we communicate. All right? So if anything hurts at any point, I want you to tell me. All right, so first off, sit up nice and straight. Good. Now, first thing we do is we're going to do a direct inferior compression. So one hand on top of the other. I stand up nice and tall, and I compress down. I relax, it's a compression test. Any pain? No. no. Good. Now after a compression test, I always do a decompression. So a decompression will stand at the side of the table. These two fingers, right, the thumb and index will go on the forehead. Thumb and index of the other hand is going to go on the mastoid process on either side. And I will just stand and lift, do a little bit of traction. No release any pain there? No. no. Good. So that's the first one we will do. Now, to get into the true spurling test, if we had numbness and tingling going down the right arm, I would laterally flex the head slightly to the right, both hands go on either side, making sure you're sitting up nice and straight, and I would do downward compression. Then I would take the pressure off nice and slow. I don't want to take the pressure off too quick. And if there is a nerve root herniation, that would hurt locally and potentially causing irritation going down the arm. Right? Same thing with the left side. You go slightly to the left, and then compress down this way. Go back. Pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Can you sit on the table again for me? All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is be testing for anterior scalenes. Now, to test those anterior scalenes, we need to essentially stretch them. So not only do we have the brachial plexus going through the anterior scalene, but we also have the brachial artery, which turns into the subclavian artery and goes down the arm. So it's kind of interesting that the nerve and the arteries run parallel with each other. It's very beneficial to us because whatever compresses the artery also compresses the nerve. When it comes to sensation, you'll feel neurological sensations oftentimes before you as a client feel cardiovascular sensations. However, we as a therapist can feel cardiovascular symptoms or signs rather more quickly than they'll experience neurological symptoms. So. In this position, I'll grab this, grip this arm, and these fingers are going to be checking the radial pulse. So standing in a normal position, not extending that arm, I check the radial pulse, get a good baseline. Now I'm not doing typical TCM pulse test, I don't really care about anything other than how does it feel? Is it relatively strong? Can I palpate it under my fingers? Okay, now I just bring this arm to slight extension, I hold it. First thing I do is I feel for any decrease in the pulse. And then I'll get you to turn the other way. Look away from me with your head, please. That's right. Now it's going to stretch the scalenes, and if there is a compression of that brachial plexus, I will feel this pulse diminish quite rapidly. We can also turn towards me. It's going to contract the scalenes, which will essentially do the same thing. And I'll feel the, the pulse go down under my fingers. Okay. And you hold that for up to a minute, but typically 
if somebody's complaining of neurological sensation in their finger, they're going to experience any, any diminished sensation. You'll experience the pulse decrease quite quickly, usually within 10 to 15 seconds. Okay. So those are two special tests that we're going to learn for now. Yeah. Is there sensation in specific fingers? I mean, Within different the brachial things? plexus, it gets quite confusing because the brachial plexus is all five nerve roots turning mm -hmm. into all five nerve branches. Yeah. And all five nerve branches then, based on our rule of thumb, is going to be, they will always be felt at the most distal point. So if we compress one part of the plexus that eventually turns into, say, the ulnar nerve, then it will be these fingers. These mm -hmm. th but that same nerve, or within that same compression, might also compress a nerve root that's turning into the nerve, the, the terminal branch of the median nerve, which is these fingers. So we can't rely on fingers with TOS, because it could be these ones, could be these ones, could be all of them. It's not until we get outside of the brachial plexus that we now rely on individual fingers to determine which specific nerve is compressed.